Good evening, everyone, and uh, thanks for joining us. I'm Denise Mayhofer. Um, I'm the treasurer in American, of American Association of Dental Editors and Journalists, who is the sponsor of this seminar. The AADEJ is dedicated to improving the communication and maintaining high standards in dental journalism. I'd like to welcome all of you for this hour long webinar and invite you to stay for the ICD Journalism Awards that will be immediately following. We ask everyone to please be sure to answer the two poll questions during the webinar. This will log in your attendance for the CE credits. Today, our live presentation and question and answer will be led by Rich Evans, Director of Marketing and Communications in the Michigan Dental Association. The webinar will explore the many facets of the member engagement. Within the social media and things you should be tracking tracking for your member organization. Mr. Evans is a self described digital growth ninja and was nationally recognized with the 2019 e healthcare leadership award for the best digital growth campaign. He spent more than a decade as the regional marketing director for Trinity Health. Before we get started, I invite you to use the chat box in the control panel to log in any questions for Rich Evans. Your questions will be monitored and answered during the session as time permits. Now I am pleased to introduce our guest for today, Mr. Richard Evans. Good evening, everyone, and uh, thank you for this opportunity and uh, volunteering to spend a little time with me tonight to talk about how we can leverage social media to drive member recruitment and engagement. I just want to confirm, can, uh, is my screen showing okay? All right. Well, as Denise said, uh, I'm Rich Evans, and uh, I... Uh, encourage you if you want to reach out at any time. I've included my um, LinkedIn URL. Uh, I'll also include my email at the end of the presentation. I'm happy to entertain any follow-up discussions. Um, I've been with the Michigan Dental Association uh, just about seven months now, so I'm new to association marketing, having spent more than a decade in healthcare marketing. Uh, but when it comes to uh, digital marketing, uh, it's a space I'm very comfortable in and I'm excited to uh, talk to you all tonight a, a little bit more in depth about how we can leverage social media. Uh, as described in um, the promotion for this uh, webinar, we have three learning obje objectives tonight. Uh, best practices for targeting key audiences based on uh, platform and their demographics. We'll gain insights into how to successfully integrate your marketing efforts across those social media platforms. And then I'll also share some tips on how you can leverage the power of your membership as brand ambassadors uh, through social media to amplify your engagement and uh, support recruitment efforts. Where I usually start, uh, well, what I would like to say, I guess, is uh, I'm from West Michigan. I don't know where everybody else is from. I'm seeing that poll come in now. Uh, it's a little bit cold here, uh, so I hope some of you are able to enjoy some, uh, some sunshine and warmer temps. Um, the key to any marketing uh, initiative, um, and it's more true with digital than anywhere else, is you need to know your audience. And with that, just starting with a few basics. Who? Um, this is important because you don't want your message to get lost in translation. And uh, as somebody who's been married for 20 years and has uh, three kids of varying ages, uh, I'm often finding myself uh, having to tailor my message to either my college age child, my high school age child, or my middle school age child. And if any of you have uh, been in similar situations, it's a, a, a great primer for how to approach social media. Multiple channels, multiple audiences, and 
depending on who that audience is and what channel you're using, uh, your message can fall flat or it can strike the bullseye. We're, we're fortunate um, at the Michigan Dental Association that the ADA has developed some um, member personas, and these really allow us to uh, see where our target audiences spend their time online, uh, what resources they trust, and what pain points they're facing. Much of my time with you tonight will be talking specifically about the importance of understanding the who behind any of your social media initiatives, whether it's uh, organic or uh, paid ads on Facebook or Instagram, anything that you're doing uh, in the social media space that you can target. Uh, there are different rules that you should follow and different guidelines for uh, the demographics of your audience. I'm just going to start by um, walking you through some of the persona detail that I use in my marketing initiatives. And these will be very familiar to, to most of you. Uh, Javier is a, a dental student. Uh, so at 25 years of age, he's worried about his student debt. Um, he's entered the dental profession because of the social and altruistic aspects of it and he's concerned about a job after graduation. Those are just a few of the data points that we're able to collect on what we call our dental student uh, audience, but they're key in understanding what his pain points are and uh, how he is utilizing social media and what type of message we need to, uh, to provide to him. The next category um, or segment of our audience is a new dentist. So this is Kay, she's 32. She's part of a mid-sized dental practice. As a wife and mother of young children, a healthy work-life balance is really important for Kay. She's working hard to build her practice. Uh, some of her pain points include, she's concerned about declining insurance reimbursement rates, and she still has an eye on her student debt. So already as we're identifying these audience segments, you can see the types of messaging that uh, would be beneficial for us from an association perspective when we're describing our, our benefits and what we can provide. The solutions to their challenges is how I like to uh, tee this up. Melanie, she's a mid-career dentist. She's 45. She practices out of her own office and loves the independence that brings. Uh, she drives much of her identity from her profession. Um, she, like Kay, is concerned about declining insurance reimbursement rates. But as a mother, as a wife, as somebody who's ingrained in her community, she's also interested in focusing on oral health and education and making sure the community understands what good oral health is and why it's um, so valuable to have uh, regular visits with your dentist. This is Travis. Uh, he's a non-member dentist, meaning he's uh, part of our suspect list. He's someone we're pushing to recruit. Um, so he's 41, husband and father. He owns his own practice. Uh, what's vital for him is he needs to understand really what's the value. So uh, as a successful businessman, he's always looking at the cost benefit analysis and trying to understand what is that reciprocal value that he gets from being a member of the Michigan Dental Association. Uh, one thing he is interested in is he wants an advocate on insurance, regulatory, and legislative issues. And he holds himself to a high professional standard. So where? Um, when we talk about the who, it's always important to understand where they are, where are they going for their information, what are their trusted sources of information, and where are they spending their time. And that helps us avoid the if you post it, they will come strategy of marketing, uh, where if you have one message and three social media platforms, you just put that same message out there in the same format. Uh, the beauty of social media is it allows you to be super targeted and it allows you to be creative with how you 
uh, promote your messages, uh, but that is also one of the pitfalls uh, because each audience member is unique and each platform uh, has different specifications. So how do you choose the right social media platform? Uh, most of us are familiar with Facebook, as my college-age son says, that's what uh, uh, moms and dads and grandparents use. So he has a Facebook page just so he can stay connected to me while he's in college and I can share photos and things. But uh, what, what we really see is um, individuals ages 25 to 34, and I've, I've seen some studies where that number is starting to push even uh, a little higher, 29 to 45 tends to be the sweet spot. And the purpose of uh, Facebook, it's all about building relationships. It's a lot of sharing life experiences, uh, uh, requesting uh, assistance or reaching out for support from others in your circle. Uh, it's a great place from a, uh, brand perspective to build brand loyalty and to do um, brand storytelling. Uh, Twitter, uh, 353 million users. The ages are uh, a little bit older and it's typically dominated by men, although uh, the, um, the gender gap is narrowing. Uh, I like to consider Twitter as um, kind of my press release of social media outlets. It's great for PR, it's great for making announcements, uh, engaging and, and sharing topical uh, news type items. Uh, it is limited by a character count, however, so you can't go into a lot of detail. Typically what you're doing is you're teeing up a message and giving them a, a URL to go to your website or a landing page or somewhere to dive deeper into the information. Uh, Pinterest, uh, ages uh, 30 to 40, uh, predominantly female. Uh, it's called the scrapbooking because uh, it's a social media platform that allows for you to curate and collect uh, information, um, predominantly uh, fashion, food, the arts, uh, lots of images and, and videos. Again, the demographics are a little bit more narrow. Um, and then YouTube, uh, all ages. Uh, what we're seeing more with YouTube is, uh, especially the younger demographics, uh, YouTube is kind of their Google. Uh, when they're looking for information, they will go to YouTube to watch a video of someone explaining it as opposed to just going to Google and uh, trying to read an article or get directed to a web page. So, we're seeing more and more uh, demand for video content. It, it's easily digestible. It's less of a commitment uh, to, to watch a brief video. It's a great place for brand awareness. It's also a good place for lead generation. LinkedIn, I, again, uh, the demographic is a little bit older. It, it's about networking and um, business development. Another great place for brand awareness. You can be super targeted with uh, dental professionals, hygienists, medical assistants. There's a lot of targeting within LinkedIn just based on the information that they collect when you set up a profile. So uh, you can be super targeted with your messaging on, on that platform. Instagram is uh, skews uh, a little bit younger definitely than uh, LinkedIn is uh, owned by the same company, Meta, as Facebook. And what, what we're seeing in that space is that's a very visual. So it's uh, very photo-based. They, they have expanded uh, some of their video capabilities. So briefer videos. Um, it's about entertainment, uh, retail, um, but the images are doing most of the heavy lifting or the video is doing the heavy lifting. Uh, on that platform instead of copy or content. TikTok is on here. Uh, I, I've had a, a few of the members here in Michigan share some of their uh, TikTok pages that they've developed, and that's really helped them be able to target a younger female audience, uh, young moms who uh, have young children and have questions about uh, when do I start uh, taking my child to the dentist or 
Uh, can you demonstrate the, the, the best way to get my young child to brush or, or floss? Uh, we're seeing a lot of movement, especially within that younger demographic, that female demographic on TikTok. It's not something that I've spent a lot of time in uh, from a healthcare perspective. That wasn't the uh, audience I was going after. And at the Michigan Dental Association, it's not something that we've taken uh, a bite of yet. But I'm sure as it continues to expand in popularity, it, it may be something that we dip our toe in. So I'm gonna go back to uh, reinforcing the who here. A little bit more information now as we drill down into that second layer with, with Javier. Um, someone who fits this demographic, uh, they use social media mainly to connect with friends and new acquaintances, not for professional reasons. Uh, almost all of his social media use revolves around visual-based platforms. That's why you see Javier going out to YouTube and Instagram. He's not spending a lot of time on LinkedIn yet, but he is beginning to start to curate his professional profile. So LinkedIn is still an opportunity where we can try to connect with him, maybe with mentoring messages or, or that, that type of message. Um, he spends about half his social media time on Facebook, which at the end of the day may seem like a lot, but um, oftentimes what someone in Javier's position is doing on Facebook is just interacting with older family members, parents, grandparents, other relatives and friends, and really not looking to Facebook at, to be his uh, information or content resource. Kay, however, uh, when she's on social media, it's primarily Facebook. She's also using YouTube, Instagram, and Pinterest, but she's using uh, Facebook and YouTube for both personal and professional reasons. She's probably uh, got a Facebook page for her practice, and she, at this point in her career, has a professional profile on LinkedIn. Uh, she's also starting to use YouTube more to watch instructional videos, or maybe she's even creating content that she's posting out there on YouTube so she can be uh, seen in that, that light as a, a dentist who is a content creator. Melanie uh, is a little bit different in her career and a little bit different in her social media usage. Uh, She's primarily on the old standbys, Facebook and YouTube, and she uses Twitter a little bit more than any other member group. And the reason uh, for that is um, she is keeping abreast of trending topics related to oral health and dentistry on Twitter. And it's very easy to follow hashtags and to follow um, certain individuals who you know are great content creators. Uh, she's using those to promote her practice, and she's watching a lot of YouTube uh, for um, videos related to new dental techniques or even maybe practice management tips. Again, I come back to YouTube is being used more and more as kind of a search engine in itself, whereas in the past, you would go out to Google and you would be delivered to a website where they would have a blog post or content that you would read perhaps something you would download. Uh, YouTube now is able to fill that need immediately by watching a video, being referred other videos based on your search. Um, a unique thing about Melanie though, she's also an avid reader of books, newspapers, magazines, and she spends twice as much time per week reading as she does on social media. So when we think about a mid-career dentist and how we are trying to approach them on social media, their availability uh, on these platforms is far uh, more infrequent than uh, our new dentists and, of course, our dental students. And they also have different needs because they're still used to collecting information from more of a, a tangible readership perspective. Travis spends his limited time on social media, primarily on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. And he's likely promoting uh, his practice on Facebook and um, digesting videos on YouTube. The data we have on Travis is not as complete 
because of course we do not have them in our system where we can begin analyzing that data. So it's a little bit uh, more broad with its scope, but we can still uh, pull some interesting nuggets from what we do know about him. I'll get back to more who, but now I wanna shift into a little bit of the what, because um, if we know who to target, then we know a little bit about what is relevant to them. Because if, if it's not relevant, it's just noise. And as you all know, uh, when you're on your phone, you're on your uh, computer, you're out on social media, it's like driving down an expressway with a billboard every 10 feet. There are so many competing messages that if you're not relevant, you just kind of get put in the rearview mirror. So what does this mean for our dental student? Well, the best ways to connect with Javier uh, are likely through visual media, infographics, compelling images, videos. Uh, but we need to make sure we keep these communications a little bit lighter. They need to be very engaging because again, he's using social media to connect with friends and new acquaintances, not for professional purposes at this point. So really we wanna focus on brand awareness uh, with Javier to begin laying the foundation of what are the benefits of uh, membership with, with the uh, Michigan Dental Association. Kay, she's time pressed. Uh, she'll likely um, respond to messages that they can scan quickly. So again, infographics, short videos is the best way. Um, we also need to uh, make sure that from a content perspective, so what we're sharing with a new dentist like Kay is how can membership make her more successful and a better dentist? She's at that uh, point in her career where she's trying to hone her skills, uh, learn new techniques, and also from a business perspective, find ways to manage her, a practice better, to connect all of those dots. Um, she's also starting to become more interested in advocacy updates on behalf of the profession, and uh, especially videos of, of new dental techniques. That's where we see a lot within this segment uh, gravitating to YouTube, where they're really trying to find that content. Melanie is more likely to share content created from other sources, such as photos, videos, or articles, than to be creating her own. The, the benefit of a mid-career dentist is if we create relevant, engaging content, she's more likely to share it and help us spread that message to other mid-career dentists that she knows. So we're expanding kind of the scale and scope of who our message is reaching by ensuring that we're providing Melanie the content she needs so she can easily learn and then share it with her contacts and her connections. It, it's, you know, when it becomes to non-member dentists, trying to recruit them from social media is very difficult. Typically what we're trying to do is to transition them with a call to action to uh, subscribe to our email list um, so we can begin to soft sell some of the benefits of membership. Travis does not want to be oversold on benefits right now. Uh, typically they are, uh, non-member dentists are a little bit more um, Jaded may be too strong of a word, but they're a little bit more cautious about uh, the tangible benefits versus the intangible benefits and the, the price they, that you pay and what that, those benefits are. So you have to approach that a little bit differently. And the best way to do that with, uh, with a non-member dentist is to try to get, in, get them transitioned into your email cadence so you can build that consistency, that brand awareness, and then based on what they're interacting with from, from your email efforts, uh, you get a sense of what are those topics? Is it advocacy? Is it practice management tips? What, what, how can we hook him to begin to have that conversation about transitioning from a non-member to a member? 
I'm just going to uh, pause briefly and uh, provide anyone an opportunity to ask questions. If, I, if I'm speaking too fast, please let me know. Uh, I also want to make sure that if you have questions based kind of on the who so far, that I'm able to address them before we get into uh, the, the, the conversation portion. Right now, I do not have anybody in the chat with questions. Okay. Thank you very much. So it's important that you have a conversation with people on these platforms because it is called social media for a reason. There are a few different ways that you can begin. I, I, I know what we're trying to do is drive engagement, but engagement, just like a conversation, is a two-way street. If all of your messaging is coming from the standpoint of, we are an association, here is our story, we are telling it, here are the benefits, you're doing a disservice to your members. What, what you need to be doing, as much as you're pushing out content that you're creating yourself on these social media platforms, you need to be finding ways to celebrate members. And this can, can be time consuming, uh, but when your members do something notable, even if it's not something you're officially covering, from a marketing perspective, part of your weekly routine should be reviewing uh, profiles of those members who are following you on uh, your social media to see what are they celebrating. And then from your own platforms, give them a shout out, uh, share what they're talking about, what they're celebrating, and what you'll see is that reciprocal conversation begin to happen because they'll see you engaging, so they will engage with you. And once that conversation happens, you're able to become involved with their entire scope of who else they're engaging with. Uh, one thing I haven't done yet uh, with the MBA, but but I'm I'm anxious to do is to start encouraging our members to tag colleagues in the comments of our posts. So if we're uh, posting on Facebook about uh, our mentor program, um, a call to action that would increase engagement would be to ask uh, our members to tag somebody who is a mentor to them. You would be surprised just by adding that simple call to action, how uh, your engagement can multiply exponentially. Again, it's a social platform. So the more you can create that reciprocal relationship, uh, the, the more success you'll have. And, and I really encourage this from a social, uh, especially for those mid-level dentists on Facebook, if you can tie your messaging to a call to action where you're asking a member to tag someone else who has influence them or um, who has made an impact on them, you can see engagement. Uh, from previous experience, I've seen it increase as much as tenfold on a specific post. Um, part of that time you spend is also making sure you're liking, commenting, and sharing your members' relevant posts to create that engagement. Um, from a social media perspective, most of the association world uh, relies on organic or non-paid. And um, a great way to boost that organic engagement is to spend time interacting with your members more thoughtfully and more intentionally. Uh, when you do post, uh, it's always nice to give members uh, kind of a glimpse behind the scenes. If you can put a personal face on your association by letting them see what a day-to-day -day activity looks like, uh, you'll be amazed at, at what that does from an engagement perspective. It can be something as simple as uh, showing a, a team stuffing envelopes with exciting new information that's being pushed out to members via direct mail and posting that as a way to tease that soon uh, you'll be receiving something in your um, mailboxes. It, it can also be uh, 
set up for events, maybe a behind the scenes if you're doing a video shoot uh, or any kind of interview with a member, behind the scenes on uh, legislative visits, anything that shows personalities and individuals from the association. So you can begin building that personal relationship really can improve uh, member engagement. I'm also a big fan of uh, hashtags and I've included a link here. It's just hashtags.org. Um, find out what hashtags are trending. You would be surprised uh, the amount of relevant hashtags that you can find on social media. You wanna be very careful, however, you may think something makes uh, complete sense to hashtag to a post that you've created, but it may be trending for a completely different reason than what you uh, had intended. Use them wisely, don't overuse them, but more and more people are searching their social media profiles by what's trending, by these hashtags. So if you wanna be part of those relevant conversations and you have content that is uh, useful and beneficial to your members, if you can include that hashtag, uh, you can definitely see greater engagement with your posts. And the last tip here is probably the most basic one, but it's one that uh, I have suffered from personally and uh, colleagues and friends who also work in marketing. Sometimes we forget to invite people to like us, to follow us on social media. We think just by placing our icons at the bottom of an email, that that's enough, that they'll take that extra step. What I have found is in your email communications, in your new member packets, in a variety of communications, if you can specifically extend that invitation to your members and formally invite them to um, your social media channel, you'll, you will see an increase. And again, um, let's use Melanie as an example, that uh, mid-career dentist, She's looking for content that she can share with her colleagues, with others in the dental profession. If you can get her to like and follow your social media pages, chances are she's going to find relevant content that she is sharing and you can exponentially start growing your engagement and growing your base of non-member dentists that you can begin recruiting from. Rich, we have a couple of questions. Sure. Uh, one is from Richard Roadcamp. Um, how do you get Travis to sign up for your emails? That is a great question. So say we're doing a uh, Facebook post for Travis and we're talking about uh, pending advocacy or legislative efforts we would provide a little bit of content within that Facebook post with a learn more button that would direct them right out to a web to our website. And it would either be a specific page on our website uh, where we could via a form fill collect their information and uh, tee up. Would you like to subscribe to our e-newsletter? Would you like to be part of regular email communications? Uh, it's important to note that um, by and large, you do need to uh, have people sign up to be part of uh, your email journeys. Uh, you, depending on which uh, platform you use for your email automation, uh, you can get into some deep water if you start just randomly adding uh, emails that, that you secure to your email list and sending them out. Because what you'll see is uh, people reporting it as spam if they have not signed up or unsubscribing. And those uh, email automation platforms are tracking that data. And if you hit certain uh, flag levels, you can have your email platform suspended, and it can really impact what you're trying to do just from a general communication with current membership, but also what you're trying to accomplish with recruiting new members. Uh, again, from a Facebook post, even from a, uh, 
a, a video that you produce where you're talking about the benefits of membership. You can direct people right to your website where you can capture a quick form fill that will funnel the, their data in and you can start engaging them with uh, your email content, seeing what they're engaging with, what are they opening based on the subject line of your email. Um, okay, you got them to open it, but did they click through? Did they read the content of the email and take the next step? That's when you really start trying to, to move those non-members down through that funnel to converting them into membership. Okay, a second question is from Ryan Duldig. I apologize if I did not pronounce that correctly. Um, how much mes messaging leads to info fatigue and how can we avoid it? That is a great question. Um, the, I, I wish it were an easy answer. I can tell you industry standards uh, for email automation, if you're talking emails, you really don't want to uh, hit your members more than twice a week. And even that is pushing it because as soon as your members start seeing that the content isn't as timely or as relevant as the association felt it was, they will begin ignoring the other emails that maybe were more timely, were more relevant, and you've almost lost them. From a social media perspective, um, I'm a big fan of consistency. Um, two to four posts per week per, flat, per platform. And again, by platform, I'm really talking Instagram and, and Facebook based on our audiences are, are the two biggest ones. You want to be consistent, but you also want to be relevant. And as part of that kind of worry of fatigue, if you're sharing posts from your members celebrating their successes, that's still something that counts as something that you're providing to those who have liked or are following you. So it's really striking that balance of what's relevant, what's necessary, and how are you measuring the impact of it? Is it just by number of views that your post gets, or are you really drilling down to see likes, comments, shares, uh, and that's where you really start measuring engagement. There's no hard and fast rule, but if, if you're seeing uh, your post getting no engagement, meaning likes, uh, comments, shares, that's typically a sign of one of two things. Number one, it's not a relevant message to, to your audience, and number two, uh, they're fatigued because you're overposting and not everything can be relevant. So you really have to, to make sure that it's a relevant message to your member, not just something that you as the association feels is important. That's all we have for right now. Okay. That was the end and, and I know it's quick, I, I was told uh, to keep it to, to 40 minutes and allow time for questions. I, I know I breezed through really quickly, but um, I, I was hoping much like engagement and what I talked about that, that we could, uh, that there would be some questions and we could have a little bit uh, of a conversation just, just kind of based on what you're seeing at the local level from, from your social media efforts and, and uh, how I can talk to you about how that could be impacting your engagement and recruitment efforts. We are, we are not seeing any more questions. <laughs> Ryan says, thank you. <laughs> You're very welcome. You're getting more thank yous.
Well, I, I want to thank everybody for spending a little time with me. Again, uh, I believe this recording will go out or, or my presentation will. Um, I, it will include the link uh, to connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm also very happy to connect via email if, if you have any follow-up or if there are any additional questions. Well, thank you everyone for your questions. Um, we really appreciate your attending our CE webinar and we extend a special thank you, of course, to Rich Evans. Oh, wait a minute. I, I do see, yep. I'm ending too soon. <laughs> Let me go in here now. Um, Rob Poglis says, the answer is informative on fatigue was very helpful. That was very, has been very difficult to determine over the last two years. Thank you. Um, Robin Henderson says nicely organized and helpful. Dennis says, thank you very much. Laura Stedman says, thank you very much. Great program. I said, oh, back up here, we have Anne Marie. I missed that one. Before you go, can you talk about the use of photos and other imagery? Of course. Um, imagery is typically what uh, first engages somebody on social media, whether it's Facebook, definitely Instagram. Um, the more you can utilize uh, photos of your members, uh, the better, celebrating their success, putting a face to, to the association. Um, you also want to make sure, especially on Instagram, that, that it's a photo that in a way tells a story without a lot of context. Your space on Instagram, the attention span is, is um, much less. So think an action shot. Uh, if you're meeting with a legislator, it's it's that shot of standing with a legislator. If uh, you're in a member's office doing some kind of training uh, to assist with interpersonal staff communication, it's an action shot of that ha happening. Um, sometimes you have to use stock photos. I do not like to use stock photos on social media. I relax that a bit more for email. But on social media, you want to make sure that uh, you're using real photos and that they help you tell a story without having to dive into the content of your post too deeply. We have another question from uh, Richard Roadcamp. How many hours per month should staff members of organizations spend on SM curation? as many hours as it takes to meet your goal. Uh, the, there, there's not a standard. It's, it's really how are, how are you, what goals have you set uh, for your social media efforts? Is it about the number of likes or followers that you're getting to that specific social media platform? Is it about the number of views that you're getting each month to all of your posts? Or is, are you a little bit more down in the weeds of trying to develop uh, an engagement scorecard where you're assigning a value to a view, uh, a higher value to a like, an even higher value to a comment? Uh, so it depends on how sophisticated. Uh, I can tell you that we have a very nimble team uh, here in Michigan. And we're not able to spend as much time as we could. The more time you can spend, the better. I always like to, to try to carve out um, an hour, three times a week where I'm viewing the analytics within social media. I also have team members who, who are doing that as well. And then um, I, I would say, perhaps three hours a week, just from an analytics perspective. It's always helpful to uh, plan out your content calendar in advance. So you know, leading into March, here are the topics we're gonna try to go with. So it may not be how much time you're spending in the platform posting. It's really how much time are you spending in the platform, analyzing engagement, understanding what's resonating, what's not, who's it resonating with, 
so you can get more information to inform your audience personas. Thanks, Rich. Um, we have one, well, we have a couple more actually. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Dennis Tartikow says, what are the legal implications of using patient photos and the need for approval? You always need uh, a signed release to use patient uh, photos. That, that would be a HIPAA violation. So uh, always, 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 if you're using any imagery of a photo, you need to have a signed release. Okay. Uh, Lance Rucker says, imagine that you were wanting to communicate, perhaps to motivate, to enhanced ethics of professionalism, but that you were neither seeking new members but that you are interested in communicating, communicating with any and all members of the profession, but not seeking increased membership. That might be the nature of the social media, media for the ACD. What would that change? Um, how would that change your strategies? I wanna be thoughtful before I respond. There are a couple of options here. Uh, from an organic perspective, so a non-paid perspective, I might recommend a, a uh, LinkedIn, uh, the creation of a LinkedIn group where you're recruiting uh, members of the profession not to uh, become members of your association, but just to participate in that group and those conversations. Uh, you can also do similar things on Facebook, create a closed group. I, I feel that is the best place to have these types of conversations as opposed to trying to do it on your association Facebook page or even within uh, your your LinkedIn page. Um, it's a freer environment for uh, those participants to be able to have that dialogue. And you're also ensuring by uh, having them apply to become a part of that group that you're screening them to make sure they meet whatever criteria. Uh, the, the last thing you want to do is to have discussions from a professional perspective on a public social media platform where you can't control who's uh, viewing those conversations and participating. The other option, uh, if you have some budget dollars, is to uh, create a targeted ad campaign, uh, LinkedIn, has some wonderful targeting. Uh, Facebook does as, as well, not as extensive as LinkedIn, but for um, a relatively small investment, you can promote the availability of joining that group, having those conversations specifically to targets that meet your criteria. That Seems to be it. Um, oh, no, there's another one. This is again from Lance. How about need for signed releases from dental assistants and others who also appear with the primary clinician on clinical videos? Does that need to be an item related or can one have a standing release for staff members? Best practice is to have anybody uh, whose image you're using in any way, video, photo, sign a release. Um, some businesses do that as part of their onboarding with staff. They will have a release in there uh, just to say, you know, we may use your image in marketing and that can be addressed kind of as they onboard. Other organizations will do it uh, on an annual basis where they will just have a new release that they distribute. And some will do it kind of on a case by case basis. Uh, I, I'm a fan of making sure you have a signed release for anybody that appears in any message uh, that you are promoting. I've been uh, involved in cases where uh, there were separations between an employee and, uh, and a business, and we were using their image and marketing assets and collateral. And it, it, it's, a, it's a slippery slope. And the last thing you want is to be uh, on the wrong end of some type of grievance because you don't have a signed release. It's always better to 
to have that signed release. And again, maybe it's something you tee up annually. Maybe it's something you do uh, as new employees on board, but um, d definitely try to collect those and to make sure that you're saving that release. Okay. Um, Lance says, I agree and thank you. If I sound like an overcautious California dentist, it is because I am. <laughs> no, it, it, there. Uh, it's not overcautious. It's just careful. And uh, I, I think as social media continues to evolve uh, and, and we see images that are non-consensual being released, uh, employers have to be extra careful with how they are using uh, photos of their employees and their team members. Uh, you've been reminded by uh, Elliot Paisner to please share your email one more time before you wrap up. I'm I'm happy to do that. You can reach me at revans at michigandental.org. And I will put that in the chat here quickly as well. Okay, if there's no more questions, then we will wrap this up. Um, we do really appreciate you for attending the seminar and we definitely appreciate Rich Evans for sharing his expertise and time with us. Um, watch your email for further info on our AADEJ May 3rd webinar and also for our up upcoming in-person meeting in Houston. Uh, for our annual meeting that we have not had in the last two years. So we're very excited about that. Uh, now I'd like to turn the program over uh, to Dr. Leighton Weir to begin the presentation for the 2021 ICD Journalism Awards. Leighton, you're muted. Gotcha. It's a pleasure to be here tonight representing the International College. As a former editor myself for more than 25 years, I really appreciate the effort all of you expend in producing your publications. And I want to thank each of you who submitted entries. I also want to encourage you to enter this year's competition, which is the 50th year the ICD has held the Journalism Awards. The deadline for entries is March 31st. You can find the entry forms on the ICD USA website under awards. We look forward to presenting the awards in person in October in Houston at your annual meeting. I'd like to thank the AADEJ and Susan Pittman with the ACD for their assistance in putting this meeting together and to Kylie Evans of the ICD staff as well for her help. I also wanna extend a special thank you to Jennifer Greenville, our ICD executive assistant, whose duties include administering the journalism competition. If any of you have any suggestions on how improvements could be made to the contest, please send them to Jennifer. The plaques for the winning publications will be coming to you soon in the mail. And now on to this year's winners, several of whom are first time winners. The first award will be for Silver Scroll for the most improved publication. I'm waiting. There we go. The award this year goes to the Virginia Dental Journal 2019-2020, Richard Roadcap, editor. The next category is the Platinum Pencil for the best use of graphics. Division one winner is the contact point for the spring 2020 issue. Kara Sanchez, editor. 
The Division II winner goes to the Wisconsin Dental Association Journal. Ryan Duldy, DDS editor. An honorable mention award goes to the Nugget, Ash Vasanthon, editor. Next category is special citations. Uh, first one goes to the Journal of the California Dental Association for the October 2020 issue, a series of articles on COVID. Carrie Carney, editor. Second award goes to the Pennsylvania Dental Journal, an issue caring for the oral health of individuals with special needs, Stephen Raddick, editor. The uh, next special citation goes to the West Michigan District Dental Society Bulletin, their fall 2020 issue, looking to leadership, personal experiences during the pandemic. Rachel Sinicola, DDS editor. The next award goes to the Nugget, October 2020, Surviving Office Disasters, Ash Vazenthon, DDS editor. Next category is a golden pen. The uh, Division I winner goes to the Journal of the California Dental Association for their January 2020 issue ensuring a vibrant future for dentistry through research and discovery. Carrie Carner, DDS editor. An honorable mention is presented to the Journal of the Massachusetts Dental Society for their fall 2020 issue, COVID-19 Teledentistry, a game changer. David Becker, DMD editor. An additional honorable mention goes to the Texas Dental Journal, the October 2020 issue on the 2021 legislative landscape. Daniel Jones, DDS editor. The Division II winner goes to Northwest Dentistry for their January, February 2020 issue, The Personal Cost of Addiction, How Can Dentists Help? Brent Florine, DDS, author, and John Luth, DDS, editor. An honorable mention goes to the Tri-County Dental Connection for their issue on Spanish flu pandemic, 1918 to 1920. Dan Jenkins, DDS, editor. I would now like to introduce Dr. Elliot Paisner, our ICD District 1 Regent, who will present the rest of the awards. Hang on just a moment. <laughs> okay, thank you, Doc. Thank you, Dr. Weir. I it's my pleasure tonight to to announce the winners of four different categories, starting with the newsletter award. The Division One winner is the Texas Dental Association, TDA Today. 2020, Daniel Jones, DDS, editor. Honorable mention, word of mouth, winter to spring, 2020, Melissa Carmen, editor. Division two, second district dental society bulletin, May, 2020, Stuart Segelnik, 
PDF editor. For leadership editorial article, division one winner, the Journal of the California Dental Association, November, 2020, the dis-ease of microaggressions, Brian Shu, DDS author. The Mekong Dental Society Journal, winter, 2020, get yourself checked today, Michelle Desorgat, DDS author. Honorable mention, Tri-County Dental Society Connection, 2020, volume four, number one. On your marks, Catherine J. Cook, DDS author. For outstanding cover, division one, the winner. Oral Health, June 2020, Bruce R. Pinn, DDS, editor. Honorable mention, Contact Point, Autumn 2020, Cara Sanchez, editor. Division two, the Journal of the American Academy of Clear Aligners, summer 2020, Jeffrey Galler, DDS, editor. Honorable mention, Northwest Dentistry, July to August, 2020. Carmelo Sinqueonze, MDA, Sue Miller, Managing Editor, and John E. Luth, DDS, Editor. Humanitarian Service, article or series of articles that exemplifies serving others. The winner in Division One, Ontario Dentist, July to August, 2020. Shining a light on Noma, a cruel and disfiguring disease of poverty. Carlos Quinones, DD, DMD, editor. Division two, Second District Dental Society Bulletin, August to September 2020. The SDDS dental resident embarks on humanitarian mission to Uganda. Shalom Benzake. DDMD, author, and Stuart Segelnik, DDS, editor. I want to thank you all for your participation tonight and this year. And I want to also express my gratitude to Susan Pittman and the ACD for hosting this evening's event. Thank you all. <laughs>